Bruce Allen here. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm going to review the new Sunjo 12.6 inch, 13 inches if you're rounding, 12 amp electric deep thatcher and Scarfire model AJ798E. Sunjo also recently released a new 15 inch model if you're interested. That's model AJ805E. In this video, I'll talk about the features and specifications of the 798, compare it to the previous model 801, share my top five likes and dislikes, explain why I invested in the tool, provide some helpful tips, and finally show you the tool in action. As always, please see the information section below to jump to a specific point in the video. Let's get started. Oh, yeah. I purchased this directly from Sunjo's website, which is actually snowjo.com, Sunjo being Snowjo's summer product line. You can also get it from the Home Depot, Amazon, and many other retailers. While I think this model could be a step down from the previous model, which was the 801, assuming Snowjo is assigning model numbers sequentially, both the 798 and 801 have the same working width of 12.6 inches, and both are rated at roughly 12 amps. The only differences from what I can see are that Snowjo, Sunjo, whoever they are, got rid of the angled handlebars on this model, removed the highest of the height adjustments, upgraded some parts, and changed the arrangement of the tines on the dethatching cylinder for both new models 798 and 805. I was looking at the 801 last year because it got great reviews other than its toy-like construction, but unfortunately I waited until they were out of stock. So this year, when I saw the 798 on sale, I moved quickly. The tool comes with the scarifying cylinder installed and the cylinder with the tines is the dethatching cylinder. I'll talk more about those later. It's easy to swap them out and it requires a 5 8 inch hex key, which is included. Here are the top five things I like about this tool. Oh yeah. Number one, first and most importantly, the tool performed better than I expected. Now, I got this tool because it was late April and the lawn was looking terrible. Man, I spent hours in the backyard weeks earlier. I was raking out moss, pine needles, dead grass, which I do every year and abhor because it's grueling and the results are always mediocre at best. And in the front yard, there was still a layer of dead grass from last year. New sprouts were being suffocated and that layer of debris, it not only potentially leads to disease, but overseeding on top of it is a waste of time and seed. That plug there, that's from aerating last fall. It's just a wad of thatch. If seed germinated on that, the new grass would have little to no drought tolerance when summer rolls around. So all that's to say the dethatching cylinder did a great job raking up debris on the surface of the lawn, while the scarifying cylinder did a great job removing those root balls, AKA thatch, that are just above and below the surface. The scarifier also cuts trenches for better seed to soil contact and pulling out all that junk provides breathing room for new growth. Number two, I like that maintenance is easy. You clean out the vents by hand or maybe with some compressed air or brush, dust off the motor housing, check that the mounting device for the cylinders is secure and that the blades and tines are sharp, and that's it. If you experience excess vibration, it's likely you need to replace the cylinder. Too many impacts on large rocks and roots over time will throw this thing out of balance. Here are the replacement part numbers, although as of the making of this video, these parts aren't available yet. Come on, Sun Snow Joe. Number three. The tool is a good value. Basically pays for itself in two years as compared to renting the big boy tool from the Home Depot. Oh my back. I purchased mine directly from Snow Joe's website. Last I checked it was $129, but they were running a promotion when I got it. Um, so I got it for 110. Saved me $19, which I reinvested into an extended two-year warranty. So in addition to the typical two-year warranty, I added an additional two years for a modest 16 bucks. Nice. I'll take it. Or Speaking of warranties and extended warranties, Sunjo takes the warranty seriously. I know this because my Snowjo shovel broke last winter in the middle of a storm. Seriously? I was annoyed. And they delivered me a new one in three days <laughs> before the next storm. That's impressive. So just be sure to register the tool on the Snowjo website. And while I don't usually recommend extended warranties on items less than a thousand bucks, I don't know, it just felt right in this case. It was just such a modest price to extend the warranty for two years. Number five. And finally, the instructions were clear and the tool was easy to assemble. I appreciate that. I put in the lower handlebars, screwed them in using a Phillips head screwdriver, Attach the middle handlebars with the handle knobs and bolts. Attach the upper handle frame with the handle knobs and bolts.
attach the cable clips. Hmm. It was done. Only took five minutes. Now for the top five things I'm not so crazy about. <laughs> no. Number one. If you've read the reviews on any of these Sun Jody Thatchers, you know the eight gallon thatch collection bag is too small. To make matters worse, the manual says you're not supposed to use the tool without it. So as a disclaimer, if you're gonna use the tool without the bag, like most folks, you do so at your own risk. Perhaps <laughs> wear shin guards in case it throws a big stone. And while the tool does a great job bagging, reducing the need to rake, blow, or use the mower's bagger to pick up the debris, you'll be unloading the bag just as often as you'll be trying to avoid running over the cord. Which brings me to number two. Number two. In general, I just don't like electric lawn tools. Being tethered to a cord, pff, frustrating, nerve wracking. It's not how I wanna die. I almost hit the cord a few times and you know, there's nothing you can do about it other than investing in Sunjo's new and pricey 40 volt powered dethatcher, model 24V X2 DTS 15. <laughs> Number three. Similar to the 801, this thing feels like a toy, albeit a dangerous toy. Kicking the plastic tires, if you will, it's pretty light, 21 pounds, and the bag fits in nice and snugly, and that'll add some weight as well when it fills up. There are cheap little four inch plastic wheels in the back, slightly wobbly eight inch plastic wheels in the front. Lots of plastic parts. Oh, it's also got the same flimsy handle as the 801. Whatever. I'm a bit sad it doesn't have the vertical bicycle handlebars of the 801 and new 15 inch model, but not sure they make a big difference. Although because it's so lightweight, I noticed the tool would occasionally bounce. It can also tug forward like an untrained dog. It's more apparent when scarifying since the blade digs in, but the detaching cylinder does it a bit as well. Number four. If your lawn's like ours, complete with potholes and molehills, <laughs> results can vary. The tool's not great at raking and scarifying uneven surfaces. Makes sense though, which aside from having a small yard is one of the reasons I didn't go with the wider 15 inch model. I figured it would straddle too many divots. Seriously? Oh. Number five. Lastly, the tool doesn't break down easily for storage. Kind of annoying. The bolts are too short to loosen the handle enough to fold the handle down. If you wanted to collapse it though, you could by removing the bolts and the handle knobs entirely. <laughs> yeah, that just happened. Not a deal breaker. A few more things worth pointing out. While the 801 has five height or depth settings, the 798 has only four adjusted with this lever. Four is just fine. The fifth setting of the 801 is a very high raking setting, which would make it easier to wheel this thing around when the scarifying cylinder is attached. But other than that, don't need it. And I guess I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about safety. The tool is double insulated, so it doesn't require grounding, hence the two pronged polarized plug. You secure the plug with the pretzel maneuver to prevent the tool from unplugging. And the manual mentions something about putting a loop through the switch box, but I couldn't get it to work because my cord was just too hefty. I know, serious first world problem. Either way, you'll want to use an extension cord that's rated for outdoor use, and that is the correct gauge. That'll prevent the motor from overheating. Once you've got the proper cord, you'll only want to plug into a GFCI outlet, and obviously don't use the tool if the lawn is wet. Electricity and water make for a deadly combination. You'll notice the tool is not too loud. I'd say it's about as loud as a canister vacuum. Definitely quieter than my shop vac, but if you're sensitive to noise, you may want to wear earplugs. And to share a few things that I found helpful, tip one. Before detaching, mow nice and short, but don't violate the one third rule. No need to stress the lawn out even more. And cutting short will make it easier for cleanup if you don't use the bag. Tip two, don't turn on the tool until you're sure you have a clear path away from the core. You wanna start closest to the outlet and work away from it. That way the cord is easier to navigate and you're less likely to run it over. And finally, not a tip, but semantics. I know, I know, son Joe. It's pronounced scarifier. Nope. I mean scarifier. Boo. But to avoid being booed every time I say scarifier. Nope. I mean scarifier. Boo. Boo. Which gets old pretty quickly. Yes. Uh -huh. I'm sticking with Team Scarfire. Sounds much tougher than Scarfire.
All right, here we go. Dethatching, which is basically power raking. I always get tangled up. <laughs> this is why I hate corded lawn tools. Forgot my safety glasses. Because there was a lot of debris on the lawn, I went with pretty aggressive settings. I raked using the dethatcher cylinder with the depth set at zero millimeters, and then later on I scarified at minus 10 millimeters. Oh, here, take a look. You'll notice there isn't much green in the bag other than maybe some moss. And given I'm using the dethatching cylinder, what you're seeing is debris that was removed from the surface of the lawn. On average, I think the bag needed to be emptied between every third and fourth pass. However, while bagging makes for slow work, there's definitely less cleanup when it's used. Having used the tool with or without the bag, and at times I didn't even bother to empty it, I got the sense that it takes just as long to constantly stop and empty it as it does to remove it and then clean up in between passes. Obviously, if you've got a helper, it's faster and easier to use the tool without the bag, but of course you do so at your own risk. I'm definitely getting in my 10,000 steps today. If you don't bag, you should clean up in between each pass. I use the blower. I was too lazy to get out my backpack blower, but you can also use a rake, rake it into piles, or even use the lawnmower. If you use the mower, set the deck height low enough to pick up debris, but not low enough to do any additional cutting. Raking with the detaching cylinder, I started vertically, and here in the second pass, I go horizontally. Had I needed a third pass, I'd have gone diagonally, but given how this thing tears up the lawn pretty good, I have only done another pass if I was planning to put in an entirely new lawn. Eventually I decided to use the tool without the bag, which the manual says you're not supposed to do. And when I kicked up a good sized rock, it sounded like it was going to cut me off at the ankle. So be careful. By the time I got the backyard raked, I got called in for dinner. So raking the front lawn and scarifying had to wait. And that was unfortunate because it rained for the next three days. And in the words of Tammy Cochran, which was actually a song written by Patrick Jason Matthews and Carrie Kurt Phillips, life happened. That's some music trivia for you. Finally, once the lawn was dry, which was three days and a wardrobe change later, I power raked the front yard using the deep thatcher cylinder. The debris was really thick. Impressively though, the tool didn't bog down. I was also wondering, what's my next electric bill going to look like? And then I was like, who cares? The lawn's going to look great. I hope. The first and second pass in the front yard removed a lot of debris. So I used the mower to pick it up. Then it was time to swap in the scarifier. I started in the backyard and set the depth to minus 10 millimeters. You can see it rips things up pretty good. I used minus 10 millimeters because I plan to overseed with ryegrass and thin fescue uh, in the shady areas under the pine trees. I think you'd want to set it at minus five millimeters for bluegrass, but don't quote me on that. I was trying to keep track of how many barrels and bags I filled up dethatching and scarifying, Ooh. scarifying. But honestly, I lost count. Just know it was a lot. Here you can see what a difference the bag makes when scarifying. It makes a big difference. 
I didn't really need to rake the area where I bagged. Now for the horizontal pass with the scar fire. I probably didn't need to do it, but the lawn already looked so bad, I figured I got nothing to lose. The scar fine blades are fierce, especially with two passes at minus 10 millimeters. You'll see in a moment what got picked up. The scar fire not only pulls up thatch, but also a fair amount of grass. It's basically a mini rototiller. And I'll be honest, at this point, I was thinking, ugh, what have I done? The front yard didn't look quite as bad once I was done scarifying. Um, and I did a vertical and horizontal pass. It's amazing how much thatch came up. And while I was finishing the cleanup, I realized I had a chicken in the oven. <laughs> it was my night to make dinner. I can multitask. Oh, look at that beautiful bird. And because I refused to further delay completion of this project, I grabbed some seed, quite literally, put it down at the rate instructed on the bag, beginning with the edges and then filling in with overlap, lightly raked it in, put down some fertilizer for new grass, grabbed my hack irrigation system, lightly watered, and ended up missing the dinner that I'd started. So instead of eating with the family, it was just me and Mr. Stubbs. And the cats. All right, let's get back to the yard. Normally, I'd put down a light layer of peat moss before watering. Helps keep the grass seed moist and provides nutrients. But given I didn't have any the day before, I had to go pick some up, and then I spread it by hand. I also added a little more seed, and then I lightly raked it in. The seed won't germinate if it's buried. All right. Here it is, my beautiful new, kind of looks like a mud puddle. <laughs> beautiful, right? No, it's not. But as I always tell my other half, it's going to look worse before it gets better. Here it is, a month and a half later. Look at that lush sea of green. This is the front yard after I mowed it on the highest setting. It's a nice green carpet now. Even the bunnies are happy. Come here, little guy. No? Don't eat my lawn. To wrap up, if you're a DIYer and you want a nice healthy lawn without the hassle of renting heavy equipment from your local Home Depot, I'd say this is a great tool to have. While you'll only be using it maybe once or twice a year, I still recommend making the modest investment in the extended warranty. I hope this video has been helpful. If it has, please do me a favor and like it. More importantly, please subscribe. That always helps me out. Thanks for watching. Don't eat my lawn.